from MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Well, just a few years ago, legalizing marijuana would have been unthinkable in states where Republicans rule, like Montana right now. But that all changed this year. Just ahead, learn why getting high in a red state is suddenly okay. Happy Thanksgiving. We've got turkey, we've got volunteers, and I think we have the perfect Thanksgiving story. I'm Annie Johnson with more coming up. What this Thanksgiving looks like for some students at Montana Tech. Just ahead of 6.30 on this day after Thanksgiving, Chet Lehman and Matt Elwell with you here. Our partner, Holly Brantley, you can catch her action tonight, yeah. 5.30 at 10 o'clock, uh, right here. She's uh, filling in on the evening show. That's right. Uh, you and I are here. Uh, favorite part of uh, Thanksgiving, uh, the day after, mm -hmm. oh, all the leftover pie. I, I know the kids were coming over to this morning for pie for, des for breakfast. Breakfast, yep. yeah. That's a pumpkin pie is my wife's favorite thing for breakfast. And you, you oh, eat and whatever. I never, I never get in her way because right. it's not like I'm eating that stuff. Yeah, so you're not there. <laughs> no, uh, temperatures no. into the teens this morning. You'll still need the coat on the way out the door. <laughs> it does look like we're going to see some sunshine today along with a mix of clouds from time to time. But the wind should be pretty light for most of the area. Daytime highs right into the low 40s. This is going to be a pleasant afternoon, decent amount of sunshine. And the weekend just as fabulous as can be. We're going to break it all down for you coming up in just a few minutes. Wow, can I get my hammock out? Do, do it. I dare you. No. You're chicken if you don't. <laughs> oh, there we go. Look for pictures on Monday. 630 now, one of the busiest shopping days is here with some deals that began in early first part of this month. Black Friday is changing a lot this year for many local businesses, including how they do Black Friday. To encourage less foot traffic in stores, many businesses have adopted other measures to get customers involved while decreasing the contact between people in the store. Simply just offer a much wider selection online. Um, and another big thing we're doing is we're offering kind of like a free delivery system. We will deliver your order to your house so you don't even have to leave your house. Um, if you're quarantining or you just don't feel comfortable coming in. Also, many stores have also extended their normal store hours to spread out the number of people who will be in the store at any one time. Well, Republican stronghold states voted in favor of marijuana for the first time this election. Here in Montana and neighboring South Dakota, residents voted to legalize rec recreational use of the drug. Dan Grossman is looking into the shift happening around legalization here in our country. We could be trite and say support for legalization is higher than ever. Once people legalize it, they like it. They, they like the prohibition ending. But when you look at the numbers, it is difficult to point to the contrary. There was no small uh, number. This didn't just squeak by. In former U.S. Attorney Brendan Johnson, state of South Dakota, the vote to legalize marijuana on November 3rd passed with 54% approval, while 62% of the residents voted to re-elect Donald Trump as president, a once-partisan discrepancy that can also be seen in Montana, where 57% of the electorate voted for Trump and 58% voted for legalization. Part of our state's libertarian streak, uh, which, which leads people to believe, hey, the government doesn't have a role to play in this, and frankly, prohibition has not been effective. I think carried the day along with uh, the real economic costs of continuing to build larger and larger prisons across the state. According to Johnson, 10% of the state's arrests are for marijuana possession, oftentimes a few grams. He says it's a number that is seen in states countrywide and one that has swayed Republicans to vote for a bill they once may have not. In 1992, only about 25% of the party supported legalization, where today that number stands at 53%. It became very hard to point towards legalization and say that there was anything that was moving the top line numbers. Andrew Friedman helped implement Colorado's marijuana laws when the state became the first to legalize recreational pot in 2014. He says it became a case study for others who thought the drug would lead to more arrests, youth use, and crime all things that never transpired according to the Crime and Justice Research Alliance. There's a lot of Republicans who believe in less government um, and who think that um, the war on drugs was a failure and um, would themselves be for legalization, but there were a lot of unanswered questions. And now more and more questions are getting answered. And so they're having fewer reasons to say no. In six years, 15 states have voted to legalize recreational marijuana, while 35 have legalized medical use a joint domino effect that Friedman only expects to roll into the future. I'll see myself out. But I expect to see a growing chorus of, of Republican leadership that are looking for legalization. I'm Dan Grossman reporting. 
634 now on Thanksgiving Day, Montana added 961 new COVID-19 cases, uh, more deaths, one in Yellowstone County, another in Missoula County. All that happening at a time when some local health departments did not update their daily numbers because of the holiday. With that in mind, Montana now climbs to more than 60,000 total cases since the beginning of the pandemic. 15,000, just over 15,000 cases are active. Montana also now has 681 deaths. While some counties have not updated, you can see where many left off Wednesday, plus with some changes in counties that are also reporting. Gallatin County uh, at 763 active cases right now. Silver Bowl County, 94 active cases. Well, to many people, Thanksgiving looked a lot different than any other year. That was doubly true for some Montana State University students who were advised not to go home for the holiday. But MTN's Annie Johnson explains what the university decided to do for those students and how the plan was able to come together. You see a long line of cars behind me and no, they're not waiting for any special Black Friday deals, but the faculty and staff here at MSU wanted to make sure that students had something special to be thankful for for Thanksgiving. We're so excited today. We're going to feed over 200 students who have to stay in Bozeman for the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we're going to provide them a traditional Thanksgiving meal to make this feel more like home. We know the coronavirus has drastically changed a lot of our lives. It forced many students to be responsible and sacrifice a trip home. A number of our students were told this week that they were required to quarantine here in Bozeman. And that's a really hard message to be away from family, especially Thanksgiving, especially if you're a first year student. So volunteers showed up by the car loads, ready to deliver meals in their personal vehicles. Want to make sure that the people in our community are taken care of. It's it's. We'll, we'll do what we need to do to take care of each other. It's not even that cold. This is Montana, right? So just get out and do what you do. Help people out and spend time with each other to do something good. It's important for us to show our kids that Thanksgiving is about giving oh, to others. Here. Yeah. <laughs> So. A lot of organization did not go into making today possible. In fact, the Dean of Students told me he only had to send out one email and this was the response he got. Reporting at Montana State University, Annie Johnson, MTN News. Love that. Those food deliveries, by the way, completely free to students covered by the university's budget. No contact made between the volunteers and the students. That's very cool. Now it was a similar situation for many students in Butte. Some students at Montana Tech were unable to go home for the holidays as well. Caitlin Aguilas looks at what Montana Tech faculty had in store for those students. Some students were unable to go home for the holiday season. So some faculty got together to bring Thanksgiving to them. Montana Tech faculty got together to make a turkey and a few side dishes to deliver to students that didn't have anywhere to go for the holiday. Hillary Risser said that before COVID, the students, faculty, and staff would get together to celebrate Thanksgiving. Now, faculty had to think a little differently about how to celebrate with their students. So we're baking a very traditional Thanksgiving dinner uh, to take to them today so that they can at least enjoy some nice home cooked food. The food would be delivered in decorated bags, along with a few treats to let students know they are being thought of. I think one of the things our Montana Tech family has really tried to do is to find ways to maintain that connection despite the fact that we have to be physically apart so that no one in our community feels alone. In Butte, Caitlin Aguilas, MTN News. I love that. No reason to feel alone. Oh, we're going to take a quick break here on Montana this morning. When we come back, can the company you work for tell you're getting a COVID vaccine and, and make it required for your job? After the break, find out what the experts are saying about that and whether it could start happening. But first, let's check in with Jerika Duncan to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good Friday morning ahead on CBS this morning. Dr. Celine Gounder, a member of the president-elect Joe Biden's COVID advisory board, joins us to discuss the impact of holiday travel and what the incoming administration will do to stop the spread. Also, Americans have shattered records for online shopping since the start of the pandemic, but cyber crimes involving social media have more than tripled in the last year. We'll show you the danger signs to look out for. And he's been an outspoken voice on some of the most pressing issues facing the Roman Catholic Church and the country. We talked to Wilton Gregory, who's making history by being the first black American to hold the rank of cardinal. We'll see you at 7.